Hello, my name is Ted. I am a repair technician for Whole Latte Love uh, Repair Center. Uh, I am going to be showing you how to replace a pump in your Gaja Classic. Um, you'll just need a few tools um, and of course the pump, which we will have a link for it or something on the screen. Yep. Um, and we have Mark behind the mm -hmm. camera. Uh, so you'll need a Phillips screwdriver, uh, preferably a longer one, um, preferably with a magnetic tip if you can. If not, it's not a big deal. Uh, a flat blade screwdriver, doesn't really matter how long. Um, I use this little pick. Um, I'll get to that eventually and show you what I use it for and explain. If you need to find something else to use, that's fine. A couple of zip ties. Uh, we have an, uh, a 9 and a 10 and a 12 millimeter wrench. Uh, and then a pair of little clippers. Uh, and then of course the pump. And then I use, in the shop, we use this Permado Permabond uh, glue sealant. Um, it's you know, food safe. Um, if you can't find anything like this, um, it's also easy to use um, white Teflon tape. Just make sure you don't wrap a, a lot around it. It just needs a couple of layers and then you're good to go. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open up the top of the machine. Um, you're also gonna wanna remove the accessories. You're gonna pull the tray out, set that off the side, and then we're gonna pull the tank out. Actually, we gotta pull this tube out first. Just get that out of the way because we're going to be playing around with the hose down here for a little bit and just want to make sure that's out of the way. So we're going to take out the two screws on the top, which is the only screws that hold this top plate in. So you're just going to unscrew, take it out. And again, if you don't have a magnetic tip, it'll be a little bit more difficult than that. We'll set those off to the side and to remove the top, you're just going to pull up on the back because the front of it's in these little teeth thing. There's two small teeth underneath the lid and the one big one in the middle. So you're just gonna pull up and, and then pull it out. You got this funnel that'll be in your way if you don't pop it up just the way I just did it. So we're gonna set that off to the side. Now the pump is right here. What we have to do is remove this line, which is the 12 millimeter wrench. So we're gonna go ahead and break that free. And once you get it freed up enough, you'll be able to grab it with your fingers and just unscrew it. So once you get it off, you see there's a little flare, you just basically pull off the tube. Um, also, make sure when you're doing this, the machine is powered off and not hot, because uh, this will be extremely warm in here. Mm -hmm. All right, so now what we gotta do, there's a bracket down there with two screws on either side of the pump. That's what's holding the pump in place. We're gonna remove those two screws and that's why we need a longer Phillips so we can get down there on the screw. So we're gonna remove both of those screws. That's where that magnetic comes Yeah, the magnet right? is really handy on the magnetic tip if you have it. If not, you're gonna be struggling a little bit more to get them out and also get them back in. Um, but it can be done, it's just a little bit more of a pain. Uh, one thing I'll mention is also when you're doing this job, be careful of the edges of the housing and this little thing here. Uh, anything on the metal housing, it can be a little sharp and you might cut yourself if you're not careful. Um, I've done it many a times. <laughs> don't want to don't draw blood. <laughs> yeah. So after we got the screws out of the mount, we're going to pull the pump up as far as we can so we can unplug these wires right here. And most time they will just pull right off. Um, if they don't want to pull off, you can use a screwdriver and kind of wedge it in there and kind of pop it off. This one here has actually got a little little thing sticking out there in the middle, right mm -hmm. in front of my finger. You can push down, it's a little lever type of thing, and you can push down on it. And when you push down, you'll be able to slide that right off. Basically it locks Releases it. some yeah, little pin in that hole right there. Okay. So now we have this thermal fuse for if the pump ever overheats. Uh, if the pump ever overheats, this will trip and shut the power off to the pump. In order to get it out, I usually just take my little pick here and I'll go up as far as I can behind the fuse in the opening and I'll pry it down so it starts coming out so I can actually pull it out the rest of the way. Sometimes they'll pop right out. Sometimes they're a pain in the butt and they don't want to come out because they use a hot glue around the bottom of it, which I don't know why they did that because they didn't use it for a long time and then all of a sudden they started doing it. There we go. So once you get it to slide out, it will come right out. And once you get that out, you just set those two wires off to the side, 
It's the only wires we're gonna disconnect. Okay. After that, we can pull the pump up, and you see how I pulled the tubing a little bit? It actually pulled up from underneath. That's the one that just got okay. shorter. Yep. I just made it so I could use it. You don't wanna pull it all the way out because it's gonna be hard to get it back in that hole. Okay. But now that we got it out, the next thing we gotta do is we gotta break this rubber boot mount away from the pump because the tubing goes up inside and you can't really get to it. So you gotta remove this. The easiest way to do that is to basically twist the pump and hold the mount. And you'll hear a pop, the glue around the neck will pop it free. And then you just pull it off. Okay. And you can just let that slide down out of your way, like that. Now we're just gonna pull the tube off and that takes a little bit of force sometimes. You know, you just, I just use my thumb and I grab my fingers and pull it and pop it free. Um, it might be a little harder for some people. It will come off though eventually. So now we have the pump completely out. Next thing we have to do is take this elbow off of the pump so we can put it on the new pump. All right. In order to do that, we need the 12 millimeter wrench. There you'll see there's a slot on both sides of this neck. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna force the 12 meter wrench on there. It barely just fits, but it will go on. And then we're gonna use either the nine or the 10. The 10 is kind of loose on here and you can get it to work. Mm -hmm. The nine is really tight and you can get it on there like that and it won't move. Either one is fine. You don't really need a whole lot of force, but basically we're going to hold the one wrench and break the elbow free on the neck. Okay. Once you get it free, you can actually just spin it off with your finger now. So now we got the, the elbow off. We would put it on the new pump. The new pumps will come with a cap on the neck and a cap down here. And this one usually is a little bit more of a pain, so I'll use my flat blade screwdriver and kind of just wedge it off and around. There you go. Um, at this point, it's also a good trick if you have like maybe a turkey baster or an air compressor with a, a nozzle on it to force air through this side of it in case there's the pump might be seized up from sitting around for a while with the water that's in it. Mm -hmm. If you force air through it real quick, it'll shoot out the other side and then when you, you won't have a lock up on the pump. So when you go to put it in and you can't prime it, then you gotta force prime it and whatnot. And that, I mean, that's not a huge pain in the butt, but why? not try to prevent that from happening just by forcing air through the pump, okay. if you can. If not, it's not a big deal. You can still do the force priming if the pump won't take the water. So now we got the new pump. We'll set the old pump off to the side. We got the sealant that we use. Again, you can use white Teflon tape. And I'm just gonna put a few drops of it right on the threads and that's it. So if you're using the Teflon tape, you just put a... Just wrap it around like twice. Two you're, layers. Yeah, you sides. don't want to put a whole lot on it because there's not a lot of space between here and there. Sure. Uh, but you want to put just a couple layers on it to kind of create a better seal. Okay. I mean, most of the time you won't really have a problem, but I always like to put a little sealant on it anyway to add mm -hmm. extra benefit of the seal. Okay. So now you go as tight as you can with your finger. Mm -hmm. um, and then put the 12 on, grab one of your wrenches, and then basically I'm going to hold the wrench and just kind of put the wrench on the elbow and give it a little snug. Okay. You don't want to go over, over too much because you're going to start compressing this neck with the collar right here on the elbow. Mm -hmm. And it's going to start cracking it and you just really don't need a whole lot of force. You just need to go finger tight as much as you can and then give it a quarter turn. Okay. Okay. Now the new elbow or the elbows on the new pump, we can reinstall it. Um, one thing also, is the elbow position needs to be facing the same direction as these connectors here, because that's the way it was when it was in the machine. So we're just gonna grab this neck and turn it so that the elbow is facing the same way as these wire connectors. Okay. Now this will be lined up when we go to put it in the machine and the holes will you know, screw back onto it, no problem. Okay. All right, so now we can just replace the pump by adding the tubing back on there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna slide this collar up and around and push it onto the, the neck that it just came off from, that white neck that was right there. Mm -hmm. But because we broke the glue free, we use a zip tie to go around that neck. 
So I'm just gonna go underneath here and get it started. Once you get it started, I like to leave this part of the zip tie towards the front so I can cut off the excess. And I'm pulling on it and then going back, pulling and going back and getting it as snug as I can so I can't do it anymore. Okay. And then I'm gonna get my little clippers. And uh, if you're not careful, these things will shoot off. If you're not holding it, it will fly out to somewhere. <laughs> So now you cut off the excess. Now this is be to prevent that rubber neck from coming off of the, the pump because we broke the glue free just to replace the pump. Okay. This will make sure the pump will never come out of there again, especially if you decide you have to ship it in for something or move from house to house or whatever it may be. So now we won't have to worry about this pump coming out during movement of the machine. Okay. So now we're gonna pull the tubing down a little bit as we bring the pump down because if we don't, it'll bunch up inside. Mm -hmm. We're going to hook our wires up. I didn't go down all the way because I want to make sure I still have room on, got a little wire hang up there, on the uh, pump. So basically there's a little holder here and there's a slot that you can push the fuse back up into. And you don't have to glue that? No, you don't okay. have to glue it. It, okay. it never comes out okay. anyway. Okay. And then you take that one wire, which is the same size side where the fuse is the silver one without the cap, a little white wire. Just push it on there. And then we're gonna grab the other wire that we took off and push it onto that one. So the order of the wires does make a difference there? It does, uh, the yeah, fuse okay. is on this side. Okay. So I always remember to hook this wire up on the same side as the fuse. Great. And then the other one, of course, goes there. Okay. So now we got the wires hooked back up, we can Drop it down in there, you know, pull a little excess tubing to make it a little bit easier. And now we're kind of in position. Now we just take our two screws that we took out and magnetic tip comes in handy again. And you're gonna kind of line it up. You can see the hole right there on the bracket below. And you're just going to start that one. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna tighten it down all the way yet because you might have to move the other side to get it lined up which I'm lined up now. So we'll get it in there. And now we can tighten this one down. Just finger tight is fine. And we'll go back to the other one and tighten that one down. All right, so now the bracket's back in there. The pump is new, the pump has been replaced. Everything's good. We're just gonna mm -hmm. slide this tubing back onto the neck and then take our knot and start threading it on until we can't turn it anymore with our fingers. Right there is pretty much as far as I can go. Okay. And then we're just gonna take the wrench, 12 millimeter wrench, and we're gonna hold the neck and just kinda go until it stops. Um, there's really nothing you can do by over tightening in it, um, but you just wanna make sure that that flare is sealed up against the elbow. Okay. So now, that's that. Um, and the last thing I like to do, um, the pump flops around a little bit, so if you're moving the machine around a lot and it gets dropped or whatever, the funnel can hit that, the, okay. the top of it. So I'll just run a, um, a zip tie around this bunch of wires, if I can get my fingers to work with me backwards. <laughs> and then just kind of go around that, zip tie it. You don't want to go too crazy tight. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on it, but you can see how it's holding it back. It just keeps it from flopping around. It keeps there. it from flopping around, going underneath this funnel area, and it can vibrate and sometimes hit this black area of the funnel. Okay. So I always do this whenever I repair a machine. I put this zip tie on there, cut off the excess. It's not going to hurt anything, and that's fine. And Ted, just out of curiosity, how many classics have you repaired, maybe? <laughs> Any <laughs> guess? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I mean, I've been here just about nine years. Next month, I think it is. Uh -huh. And hundreds? hundreds? I don't know. Okay. Okay. I have no idea. Um, and then after this, it's just a matter of putting the funnel back on. You're going to put the, the funnel in first, uh -huh. and you want to make sure you angle it down because you got to put this lid between these teeth, the, the two smaller ones are below the lid and the bigger one is above the lid. Okay. So if you get it positioned right, it'll slide in between them. And then at that point, you'll see that the funnel will not drop down. Uh -huh. There's a hole that that funnel has to line up with. If you just angle the funnel a little bit, 
-huh. you'll see that it will drop right into the hole. Beautiful. Doesn't take a lot of force. Uh -huh. And then it's just a matter of putting the, the last two screws in. Um, after that, you can turn on the machine and uh, get water flowing through it, get it primed out the arm, of course, when you open up the knob. Um, and then if it's working and you got flow, then you're good to go. All right, Ted, thanks so much. And again, you know, if you need that pump, uh, there's a link in the description or the card link up in the upper right there, probably. Click on that and you can get that part. Yep. All right, Ted, thanks so much for taking us through that. You're welcome. Want to learn more? Subscribe now so you'll know about the latest videos on everything coffee from Whole Latte Love. Hello, my name is Ted. I am a repair technician for Whole Latte Love uh, Repair Center. Uh, I am going to be showing you how to replace a pump in your Gaja Classic. Um, you'll just need a few tools um, and, of course, the pump, which we will have a link for it or something on the screen. Yep. Um, and we have Mark behind the mm -hmm. camera. Uh, so you'll need a Phillips screwdriver, uh, preferably a longer one, um, preferably with a magnetic tip if you can. If not, it's not a big deal. Uh, a flat blade screwdriver, doesn't really matter how long. Um, I use this little pick. Um, I'll get to that eventually and show you what I use it for and explain. If you need to find something else to use, that's fine. A couple of zip ties. Uh, we have an, uh, a 9 and a 10 and a 12 millimeter wrench. Uh, and then a pair of little clippers. Uh, and then of course the pump. And then I use, in the shop, we use this Permado Permabond uh, glue sealant. Um, it's you know, food safe. Um, if you can't find anything like this, um, it's also easy to use um, white Teflon tape. Just make sure you don't wrap a, a lot around it. It just needs a couple of layers and then you're good to go. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open up the top of the machine. Um, you're also gonna wanna remove the accessories. You're gonna pull the tray out, set that off the side, and then we're gonna pull the tank out Actually, we gotta pull this tube out first. Just get that out of the way, because we're gonna be playing